Hi everyone, welcome. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting. It's the 16th of January, 2020. Welcome to a brand new year. Um, let's start looking at the agenda and go through our meeting. So here's what I've got. Uh, we'll talk about open action items first. Then we had an uh, item on the Adopt Open JDK Hotspot Transition Progress, uh, Open J9 Progress, uh, renaming the agent Docker images. Uh, let's see, I guess we should probably put the people on this. So Adopt Open JDK. Alex, do you want to cover that? Or is that a gym topic? Is um, that me? Sorry, Alex, I didn't hear that. Say again. Okay. Can you hear me okay? I, I'm having a little difficulty hearing you. All right, just a sec. Mm. Is that better? Yes, that's much better. Okay. Sorry, so back to adopt. Was that something you want to take? Should we just look at it together in the meeting to see where we're at? Um, I think Jim. Okay, that's a Jim topic. That one. Great. And if Jim, that's a surprise to you, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll do some talking to it as well. Okay. So it's all good. Great. All right. So then renaming agent Docker images. Oleg, you've got that. Broadening the platform support for Docker images, I think is a general expression of the, well, let's, let's put that one also on Jim, are you okay if we act, have you act as the lead on that conversation? Yep, that's fine. Okay, then Google Summer of Code, Oleg, uh, Q -E Q -E -M -U and uh, Docker Manifest Integration and CD Pipeline. Jim, that's you, and hopefully we'll have you show us a demo, demo there. And then, let's see, I think it looks like that. And then support Alpine, or, and newer open JDK Docker images. And we had, a, I'll have to take a look at that one. I don't remember, I, I think I'm the one who put it on the list. I'm not sure I remember what it is. We'll talk to it when we get there. Anything else that needs to go on the agenda before we start working through the agenda? Um, okay. Nothing specific, so there was a comment um, in uh, one of Docker images about restructuring uh, the packaging uh, pipelines. So I guess it fits a broadening platform support uh, topic. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm I not sure whether it's an intention, Mark. I think it's either here, Oleg, broadening platform support, or Jim may be talking about it on this one, because I think Jim was the one who raised the raised the question. Oh. So yes, I think one way or the other, we've got it in, in the topics. Okay. All right, so then on action items, I am sincerely sorry. Happy holidays, I still have not opened that JEP for the Docker operating system support. Continues on mine. Oleg, you've got the action item on the JEP for Windows support issue. Yeah, it will take a while. So I will definitely need to deliver on that uh, sooner than later because we already started uh, refactoring um, Windows Service Wrapper. Oh, okay, good. So this one, this one is, is the WinSW project in Google Summer of Code. Is that, uh, is that what, you're, what you were saying? Did I understand it correctly? We need to start, uh, it's not JSOC. Oh, it's not, okay. So it might be also in JSOC for YAML support and other things, but yeah, right now it happens outside JSOC. I see, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not specific to JSOC, thanks. Yeah, so for me, the main objective in this story is to specify which Windows version CV support and hence uh, um, um, uh, approximated uh, to which .NET versions we support. And also, which Win API version we have to support because we still have Windows process management uh, issues in the libraries. So it's a bit far from my immediate priorities, but yeah, I'm going okay. to finish this job. Got it. All right. Well, and, and this is an interesting time for it because I think 
as an example, Windows 7 is officially off support during this month by, by Microsoft. Well, uh, it, uh, it's a good statement, but uh, what if we talk about embedded versions, when they will stop support of embedded versions? Oh, and that I don't know. Good yeah, question. Maybe in uh, 10 years, maybe later. Right. And at the same time, I'm pretty sure that uh, there might be users who use Jenkins to run continuous integration on such uh, platforms. Some well, may call them exotic, but I don't. Yeah, so whether or not Microsoft supports the platform may not be as, as helpful as I I made reference. Good point. Thanks. Yeah, so platform, yeah, desktop uh, operating systems are being deprecated quite uh, uh, quickly by Microsoft. Uh, but if you talk about embedded platforms, yeah, yeah, there is a long term support for them. I believe uh, that even XP is still supported. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alex, anything you want to report on Windows installer and code signing? Um, we're still waiting on the code signing search. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, um, the company that's going to issue the certificate is taking a long time to verify the new legal entity. Um, so that it's still in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Alex, I'm not sure whether you're in uh, the CDF uh, slug, uh, but yeah, there is a thread uh, in operations uh, uh, which you can join. Um, and yeah, there is uh, the recent stat sub data about that from Dan uh, Lawrence. Yeah, I'll post uh, the link. I'm in the I'm in that chat, but um, I, I saw the conversation between uh, I, I don't remember who it is, but and Olivier and about the um, maybe switching to a different organization to get the cert too. Oh, let's pick your poison. They all more or less the same. Great. All right. So that cert continues to be the challenge and we'll continue to work on it because it's also blocking the, the progress on the automated release process for Jenkins. So we've got mm -hmm. multiple reasons why we wanted to get that signing thing fixed. Thanks. All right. So Jim, should we take on adopt open JDK hotspot? Yep. Um, so updates coming from upstream with that or downstream, uh, whatever. Um, uh, my uh, support for Sent OS is being looked at right now for a PR uh, to get into the unofficial uh, Adopt OpenJDK um, uh, Docker image library. Uh, and once that's in the unofficial, um, there's a not like an official process, but I have to go through some testing uh, to eventually get into the official one, uh, which will help us um, because now we, uh, you guys support CentOS. Um, along with CentOS, it has ClefOS, which is the S390 kind of port. Um, yeah, so, so that's really good. Um, in terms of the testing side, um, I have a PR open against the DOP test um, testing suite, or I forget what the name of the repo is, 100%, but um, I reworked all the Docker tests, which was um, a challenge, because uh, this is like me diving very deep into Java. Uh, we, like, they run a bunch of like, external tests, like uh, run Wildfly, run Open Liberty, uh, they run Jenkins as one of their ex uh, external tests. Um, so I guess really just common uh, Java programs, I guess. Um, and I reworked all the Docker um, images to be as slim as possible. Um, and once that PR gets submitted, what we're going to do, um, we're going to actually add, right now they're only testing, I think, the, like a, a Debian-based or Ubuntu-based uh, image. Uh, and what we need to do is expand their test framework to support multiple bases. Uh, and th basically that will allow the adopt uh, Docker um, image repo to utilize those tests. And uh, once they go through the ringer on all those tests, uh, they can get promoted to official images and thus eventually will get back to us. Uh, so it's going deep in the rabbit hole, but uh, it's going well. Um, a little slow moving, but it has momentum. So. 
that's great news. That's that's really wonderful. Okay, so so what you're seeing is that the the existing Adopt Open JDK Debian we we know we need, and there's mm -hmm. this looks like really good progress on CentOS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, there's a there's a couple other base images Open JDK supports right now, um, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. But they didn't support CentOS, and I know that's one of the ones you guys had. So. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Any, any questions from the group to, to Jim on that topic? Yeah, there, there, there's going to be a, a good amount of more images going to be supported. Uh, UBI, which is Red Hat's universal base image, which would be really cool. Um, and a couple other weird ones out there. Um, but I think UBI will be really interesting for kind of um, – more enterprise um, solutions. So, good. Yeah, I, I know that I know folks who are interested in a UBI image as well. So that's very good. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. All right. So let's talk Open J nine as the next topic. Jim, that's you again. Um. Yeah. Uh. You guys might need to jump in here and fill some blanks, but um, as far as I know, the the PR got submitted um on you guys got you guys's end um and got accepted and a couple of images got built uh but i think there was a couple uh issues that erwin um over in the openj9 team uh brought up like i guess running um i think alex you were working with him on on that or at least there was some back and forth in the uh glitter chat um i don't know if i 100 percent followed everything um do you have any more info? Yeah, so um, it, it is getting to a point where it's starting to build, but um, because we're using the Open JDK images right now, um, so it seems like they either removed some images, uh, like the ARM uh, 32 v7, mm -hmm. um, or, or or something similar. Um, it still shows up on Docker Hub, but when you try to pull it, it doesn't pull correctly. Um, so I haven't had a chance. We, we just got new, um, silicon at my job. So I've, I've, this past couple of weeks have been pretty rough, but, um, I'm hoping to get back and look at it again, um, pretty soon. Are you guys pulling the, the manifest or are you guys pulling the specific like arm, uh, you said 32 slash like open JDK or. So the way, the way the, uh, we currently have the multi arc stuff set up is um, we use a sh it uses a shell script to um, modify a docker file um, mm -hmm. and then we build um, that with we build that docker file um, separately so I, i'm sure there's a a different way of doing it but um, I, i'm not as intimately knowledgeable about docker to know if there's a better way right now no, it's fine. I, yeah, that was in the published experimental. That's the thing I've been hacking apart right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You guys are pulling from the, the, uh, you know, the ARM 32 one, not the manifest. Because I was going to say the manifest might have been edited to not include ARM anymore, or ARM 32 at least. But I mean, if you're pulling from, directly from the Arch users, which is, um, I guess, with Docker Hub, uh, like the uh, official Docker user, uh, the, uh, sorry, official Docker Hub uh, organization or Docker organization, what they did, which I think is kind of cool, is whenever you push to official images, um, all the multi arch images or all the arch images actually have users. So if you go on, uh, you've probably seen it before, if you go on uh, the Docker Hub UI, you actually can sort by users. And if you go to like S390 user, those are mm -hmm. all the official images um that um get pushed uh and belong to s390 um that's a little weird though if um arm 32 is not pulling and it's up there well they they say that it's not supported that that image is not supported on arm 32 v7 but the tags and everything are there so i um i don't know if they just push it and it's um they don't check whether it works or not, but it, it says there, there's a warning right at the top that said, this image is not supported on the ARM32 v7 architecture, but there are tags and 
mm-hmm. tells you how to pull and and stuff like that. So I just haven't had a chance to go back and look at it. I don't know how many people are using um, ARM 32 V7 uh, with Jenkins. I, I would assume that the majority of people using it are using it with Ar- um, ARM 64, but I could be yeah. wrong on that. No, I, I, I think you're right. I even on the official images, because um, when I was hacking apart the installer, I was I was looking like to see what the like manifest they actually uh, annotate uh, the architecture as uh, for ARM. Because there was like three different versions. There's ARM 32, ARM 64, then I saw like a V8, uh, which seemed like another one. I'm not 100 percent sure, but ARM 64 seems to be the most popular. But it would be awesome to support everything. So. But, yeah. yeah. So I thought ARM 32 v7 was like my Raspberry Pi one one gig of RAM. It, that it, was, which it depends on which Raspberry Pi you have, because like Raspberry Pi three is 64 bit ARM. Ah, okay. So my Pi two, I should be more specific. My Pi two, I thought was an ARM 32 v7. My Pi four, and and it's limited physically to one gig of RAM. My Pi four has four gig of RAM. And I'm pretty sure, and I know it's a 64-bit ARM. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So you yeah, are I correct. Get... The the Pi two um, is uh, is a 32-bit core. You're correct. Okay. All right. You said uh, you're getting some new silicon to, or a new Pi's, or or whatever to no, bring no, it to his... work or something like that. When Alex says he's getting new silicon, that means his employer has has just received silicon back for his job. So it's nothing to do with this. Oh, yeah, oh. I was just saying, that's why I haven't been able to look at it because I've been focused on oh. my job stuff. I thought you were <laughs> right. like, silicon like dies. <laughs> no, no, no. Alex, Alex works for a, a company that actually does silicon, which is wildly cool. It is cool, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I can, uh, I always, I have a couple of pies laying around. I can, I can try to bring those into work and, and see, um, if you're in an error, I know there's the the dreaded error I look out for all the time is, uh, I feel I would I have to go and look for it, but I know off the top of my head because it's always the the error I get whenever I try to pull down an image, and it's not built for S390. It comes up with some weird, obscure error message. I'm like, yep, that's 100% like an arch issue. So, um, you might be running to that where it's made like you said, it's made for it's tagged that hey, it works on arm 32 but in reality it's 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 not working yeah so so it assumes the action item uh, alex given your workload it, it it may not happen anytime soon but the action item is is we need to investigate further what action should i put here um you can put for me to investigate the um the architecture support okay because this we're going to hit the uh, prop we're I don't think the like the OpenJ9 is available for all the platforms either, or all the architectures. So, no, I think to, ARM's actually lacking. So yeah, so we need we need to um, have a way of kind of um, filtering out different combinations of variant and um, architecture. So um, you can put that on my plate to to, to look into um, what what is actually supported for the um, uh, different architectures. Okay, great. All right. So investigate architecture support and um, adding it into the build scripts. Is that what I'm, did I phrase that well enough? Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Thanks. Okay. Oleg noted that his network is not stable enough for him to stay on the call. So we're going to go, we'll skip this one on the rename process. I think I've seen some progress already happening in various places in discussions, but best to leave that for for his him to summarize for us. Okay, broadening platform support for Docker images. Jim, do you want to take this one as well? Jim, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what we want to talk about that because. Really, those are kind of tightly coupled. With but why don't we just? Q- so, if it's tightly coupled to QMU, let's get to that one. We'll just okay. we'll delete this one and come back to it. So, 
Google, let me take the Google Summer of Code topics, at least give a brief overview. So we've, I've put the Git plugin ideas under the platform SIG because of its platforming nature. And so uh, there has, the Git plugin has two ideas. There is an EDA uh, integration ideas, which are out there. So EDA tool integration ideas, and there are a few others that are, are like that interesting things that could be could well be interesting to the platform special interest group. Uh, and let's see, I should put a I should embed a link to the Google Summer of Code. I'll I'll do it separately after the meeting. That way it's in the notes. Uh, it's just on Jenkins.io under Google Summer of Code. Hey Mark, what what is a uh, EDA? Oh, uh, sorry, electronic, I should expand acronyms, electronic design automation. Oh, so uh, um, this is the, the kind of tools that are in Alex's world all day long, every day, saying, oh, I need to design uh, this kind of silicon or do this, maybe it's physical layout or uh, all sorts of things like that where you're trying to design either processors or boards. Um, they're all in, in generally under this concept of electronic design automation. Oh, it's, it's really awesome. So trying to like get a uh, summer kind of like intern, I guess, Google's code intern uh, to like kind of work on that. Right, right. That's the it. concept. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. That, that there are, and there, there are others. Ah, good. And Oleg's already started. Excellent. Oh, oh, right. And Quarkus, where Quarkus, if I remember correctly, is the, is the, is like Graal. It's a real, it's compiled to Java, if I remember right. So yeah, that's, that's another excellent one. Since Oleg can't join us, let's go ahead to the next topic. So Jim, we're up to you. QMU yeah. and Docker manifest integration. Yeah. So, um, since our last meeting, uh, I really only got to work on it like Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then uh, a brief, 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 uh, a little bit this morning. Um, uh, so what I've been doing is uh, I've been trying to hack apart the published experimental. Um, as far as I know, that's kind of where uh, you guys are doing the multi-arch builds. Um, and I've been utilizing Travis uh, I know we kind of talked about a little bit about Travis in the past uh, as the CI uh, CD pipeline. Um, I built it in a way where it, it's not tied to Travis at all. Uh, we could easily just integrate it with um, Jenkins, uh, but it will it'll be a little more work on in terms of getting agents for the different platforms and stuff like that. Um, the, the one nice thing Travis does for us already is give us access to S390 power uh, arm 64 i don't think they do 32 yet uh, or will be so working 32 i don't know um so it, it, and, and power um so which is really nice um uh do you guys want me to sh share my screen or do you want to click through the link i would i would love to have you share if that's okay so yep. i'm going to stop sharing and have you take the share okay um desktop sweet uh you guys can see my uh id okay yes okay so uh i had to part the um publish uh, experimental i left publish kind of unchanged uh one thing uh, you'll notice is i i made this uh that ci folder um i thought about um and these are all just changes that i i made uh obviously would have to go through all you guys um as you guys m know more about the whole jenkins ecosystem than me and how you guys want to design your repository. But uh, I moved them kind of out of the main uh, repository. Um, I've seen this a lot on a couple of different uh, other popular repos uh, where all the CI stuff is kind of pushed uh, into a folder away from kind of the you know bulk of the code um, and kind of keep them separate so people don't get confused. Um, one thing I did was um, you'll see there is no published experimental anymore. Uh, what I did is I broke it up uh, to be a little more modular uh, where you publish the images first, you publish the tags. I'm still working on the manifest. I didn't get all uh, that done. 
Um, and you kind of have these three different stages. Uh, and that's important um, due to how Travis kind of works. Um, one of the things I was trying to do is make it um, as fast as possible. Um, so trying to get things uh, going in parallel. And uh, I needed to be a little more modular because uh, before how I understand it and kind of traced through the code was uh, published experimental kind of did everything. You know, it, it went through that loop of pulling down versions. Uh, I think it pulls the last five versions loops through them, builds the tag, or builds the image, tags them, and builds the manifest. So I kind of made it a little more modular, broke it up. Um, publish images. Um, I mean, we, we can take a deep dive in the code later, but um, all I'm really doing, as the name kind of implies, uh, is going through and publishing all the images. Um, uh, down here, this is probably Oleg, uh, sorry, uh, Alex, where you were talking about um, where the arm, this is the base image that gets replaced. Uh, this is, I guess, where the whole arm 32 and arm 64 uh, come into place. Um, in here, I also made some edits to the Docker files. Uh, one, one big change I made was uh, taking out the use of QMU headers. Uh, I went fully focused on building on platform uh, instead of doing uh, emulation, which can lead to some problems. Um, so there was no need for, I guess, uh, the cross, um, I, I forget what was here. Alex and I were talking about in the glitter chat, but there, there was something here for the copying over, I think the, the Q headers or Q binaries over. Um, so if we go back to published images, um, we're really just, it's mostly the same code as you guys had. I just kind of had to together to be a little more modular. Down the bottom, now you can pass in a variant, which you guys had. It also can pass in an architecture, which we'll see just in a second why that's important. Um, and down here, I clean. I basically removed all the manifests and all the tagging, um, so just do publish images. So it, it, it does the whole verbose tag, where it's uh, Jenkins version, uh, Jenkins variant, and Jenk uh, and architecture. So it still does, these published images need to have a default tag, uh, so it's posting the most verbose tag. Um, so, Jim, what are some yep. common common values for variant as opposed to common values for architecture? Is architecture like S three ninety? Yep. And yep. Then, so, if I if I show you my Travis dot uh, Travis dot is how um, uh, Travis knows how to run the build. Uh, it's just kind of like a little meta file. Um, and in here, we have different build stages. Um, I also edited the make file a little bit um, to have more uh, things, but in here you'll have make, uh, I'm using make publish image variant, uh, which allows you to supply architecture, which in this uh, instance, we're running on uh, on-prem for S390. So S390 gets passed in. So it will just build the Debian variant um, of S390 um, and whatever Jenkins version uh, it happens to be. Um, does that answer your question, Mark? I think so. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions before I go a little further? Uh, no, pl please proceed. Okay. Um, so let me, let me show you, uh, Travis. So it'll make a little more sense. Um, what's this? Um, so in Travis, we have, uh, two stages right now. Um, but uh, more uh, the manifest needs to come still. But in here, you can see build and put uh, published images. Where, um, yeah, have you guys ever played around with uh, Travis before? I have not. So this okay. is this is interesting. Don't don't be shy though. I, I'm confident there are others who have. Okay, so uh, Travis is tightly coupled with GitHub. Uh, so as you can see, I actually have a GitHub repository. This is my fork. Um, of your guys's uh, repository and anytime i push and it's configurable but anytime i push right now uh this will trigger a build so if i go to like build history um you can see all the times i've uh committed and it starts to kick off builds you can change it so it only kicks off builds on certain uh certain branches like master uh so that it's not kicking off builds uh all the time uh that's usually probably what you want in production just to kick off a build of the master. So really only people pushing to master would be via PRs. Um, 
So in here, this is the first step, which uh, is build uh, and publish images. Uh, you'll see there's a bunch of different platforms. We can see kind of barely here, uh, the ones for Debian are the first four right here. You can see the variant right here. Uh, the next ones are the Alpine, and the next ones are the Slim. Those are the three multi-arch ones you guys have right now. I know OpenJ9, we're trying to get that supported right now too, um, but that wasn't in the um, folder for uh, multi-arch images. I, I just based it off what you guys had currently. Um, so right now, what will happen is these are all kick off in parallel um, and start building the images, and they automatically get pushed to uh, my repository over here. Uh, and these probably should look uh, familiar to you guys. They're the same kind of uh, tagging mechanism you guys use. Um, and the really nice thing about this, these are all basically spinning up uh, VMs uh, on S390, on Power, on AMD, on ARM x64. Um, so we don't need to make the use of the QMU headers at all, uh, which I think is a big advantage. Um, and then after that, I'm still working on it, but it will go ahead and publish tags. Um, I split kind of the whole difference between uh, building the images and publishing the tags uh, in terms of uh, basically just speed um, and publish tags. Um, I can show you guys that script. Um, basically lets you do like, okay, hey, publish all the Alpine tags. So those are the, the tags that go, um, you know, Alpine and then the architecture, which uh, just to confirm, these ones just point to the, the latest build of Alpine, right? Available, right? Yeah, it's not like a LTS build or anything like that. It's always the latest uh, one. That's what I would have expected. I think that's the naming convention that's already used. That unless unless the the variant or the, unless the version is called out, it's assumed to be the latest at that point. Okay, good. So uh, go yeah, ahead, go Alex. Ahead. I was going to say. So one thing to note is the publish experimental is for things that have not been fully tested. Um, eventually, those items should move into a, the normal publish script, mm -hmm. and then it would also do LTS based images um, yeah so. I started I started actually adding LTS um, I, I think that's actually one of the things that failed down here I think one of these are L LTS um, yeah I, I did notice that uh, that LTS was not in the uh, experimental so I, I kind of added that in uh, in my published tags right at the bottom um, like I said it does the whole image variance then it does LTS Alpine, so it'll go out and find uh, right here the LTS version, the latest LTS version, um, and then the LTS Slim, and then uh, the latest tag, uh, which I guess is associated with Debian, right? It's always the Debian build, which is latest. That's my recollection, is that latest has been that the default and first operating system that was supported was a Debian variant. Alex, is that consistent for your understanding as well? Yeah, I believe so. All right, good. I just want to make sure that uh, that a kind of default image was always Debian. Um, and made it in a way where um, this is flexible enough. So if down the road we did switch to uh, Debian Slim, you basically can just swap them out right here uh, and kind of change what latest actually points to. Um, yeah, uh, so this is this basically all as far as I got. Um, I guess the major improvements is really kind of uh, building on on platform uh, and taking advantage of Travis's platform. Uh, but like I said, this is not tightly coupled to Travis at all. Um, I mean, you, you, what I imagine what you could do uh, in Jenkins is have Jenkins agents uh, for S three ninety four PVC and for arm 64 because uh, that's one of the other kind of questions i had was um what is oh sorry that's my alarm uh what is um kind of the whole build infrastructure right now as it currently stands what what are you guys doing um yeah, to so kind of trigger builds current current actually i guess alex you can give a better story about current build infrastructure you're closer than i am i'm comfortable describing it somewhat out you want to go ahead alex yeah, so just as a historical um, understanding, the reason we did the QMU route is because we could not get um, agents 
for our infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, in order to build on those other platforms. So that, that is the reason we went with um, the QEMU route. Um, one thing that we, I think we have a little bit of a concern with is um, in order to publish images, we'd have to put credentials um, for specific repositories on Docker Hub. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was one of the concerns we had about using another service um, was having mm -hmm. those credentials outside of our um, main infrastructure that we control fully. Um, but I'm sure that could be revisited um, if, you know, if we can't get these type of agents, then we're going to we either need to do something else or, you know, uh, uh, fi figure out if we can pay for some sort of service or something like that. So, I mean, um, that's kind of the historical stuff. We, we only have right now um, AMD 64 based agents. So mm -hmm. um, that, yeah. that, that's kind of where we're at right now with infrastructure. Uh, what, what I can show you how uh, I manage the whole Travis credentials. Uh, in here, you'll see up at the top, I know you guys had some sort of login token mechanism, which I'm still trying to uh, integrate because uh, I knew I still, one, one of the big things I, I lack right now is checking whether the images are already up there. So if I like trigger a build, which I, I made some changes to publish images to get latest working right now. So with with Travis, if I do, I add like a the new um, change and do commit. Um, I can do push, uh, and Travis has a um, GitHub hook, which should um start a build yeah uh, so it just triggered a new build so right now it's going to be spinning up workers um and these ones just kind of popped into existence right here um the the one thing to note um which was a little surprising to me um we we have an enterprise uh travis um, and there's no kind of like throttling mechanism, uh, but in the free uh, Travis, it's not giving throttled necessarily. Um, in, in enterprise, all these things would kick off all at once. Uh, so you're not kind of waiting around for these workers, but in the free um, Travis, uh, you'll see that only five booted up. Uh, and then as soon as one is done, it will, you know, trigger the next one, the next one, next one, next one, next one. Um, this still cuts down on uh, time. Uh, ARM 64 takes the longest, takes about like 20 minutes to build all the images for uh, each variant. Um, so that's actually pushes up the build time to about like 40 minutes total uh, doing this way. Before I had it do like in stages where it was like, okay, just build Debian uh, and it would take 24 minutes for the ARM one uh, and then build Alpine and it would take 24 minutes, you know, so on. And 24 minutes three times is an hour plus just for the building images but this gets it down to about 40 minutes kind of doing it all relatively parallel um which is pretty cool but yeah this is this is kind of the workflow you would do with, with travis you would kind of do a pr to say hey we're now supporting x or you can trigger it via webhooks or you can just come and manually trigger it here um but then it starts kicking off a build uh one thing i want to show you was my secrets uh, up at the top, I'm still working on that whole GitHub token thing you guys have. Uh, and whoever did that, I would love to talk more about that. Um, but right now, I just added a Docker logon method. And you might be seeing like, oh, hey, hey, he's using environment variables, Docker username, and password. Um, I'm trying not to explode my username and password. So what, I, what you can do is Travis has this uh, really nice kind of UI to manage your secrets where it's like, okay, hey, you can enter them here. Um, they're um, hidden. Uh, and in the output of all the logs, if I like, hop in here, you'll start seeing like, you know, just normal kind of like, you know, Docker builds. Uh, right up at the top, it is doing a Docker log in somewhere um, right around here, if I can, if I'm not blind right now. Um, it's somewhere in here, but you'll notice that uh, you'll see secure right here. Um, 
that's because uh, this is, you know, James Crowley, uh, IBM is my uh, user. So uh, my, my Docker username and also the, you know, the repository or organization name. Uh, so it will actually blank out any uh, uses of passwords or um, usernames because I have my secrets managed over here. Um, so that, that's one nice thing about Travis. They have that kind of built in NIST, but I understand the other concern where um, it's off, you know, off prem. So you don't really, I guess, I guess Travis could be malicious, but I mean, it's pretty widely used. Um, does that kind of answer your question on terms of, uh, I know it wasn't really a question, but answer your kind of uh, at least concerns with the whole um, passwords and stuff. I mean, I, I've used um, Travis for another project I worked on. So okay, it's just the other, the other, thing is we always try and eat our own dog food so yes. and use Jenkins. Um, yeah <laughs> so trying to use jenkins to build jenkins to do all the infrastructure that that that's one of the goals so that we verify that all those use cases are are handled yeah yeah so i you know we have used um other services for like um i think one project using is using app Vare right now because of the uh it's a windows c sharp based project stuff mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a possibility. Right. Yeah, well, no, I, I, I'm totally, that's why I made it flexible to not be tightly coupled with uh, Travis at all. Uh, other than, you know, I guess in the whole, um, it's not really tightly coupled. It's just the whole architecture thing pulls from it. This is the only time you're really seeing Travis um, variables or anything like that. That you would just need to get the architecture from you could do it from you name if you really want to um but like uh we mentioned to mark before um getting access to s390 and power is no problem uh in terms of you know giving you guys access to uh i guess servers so you could make them into agents um i don't know how you guys necessarily would get arm maybe like an army of <laughs> uh, well, so little arm boxes arm is actually already available from from amazon itself now Oh really? So AWS now has ARM image ARM machines. I'm not sure if they're the exact architecture we need, but they just recently announced it. So so I'm now we're we're currently Azure based. So saying it's on AWS isn't isn't as much help as you might have thought. Mm -hmm. But knowing that one of the major cloud providers has already started making machines with ARM architecture available, at least for mm -hmm. me gives hope. Yeah. Um, but anyways, um, I think that's kind of what I want to share is moving away from the, uh, QMU headers, making things a little more, um, uh, modular in terms of you can, you know, run them all at once, kind of speed up build and stuff. Um, the one big thing that, um, I, I was really confused about in the beginning with this whole process is, um, in the original script, you have this whole concept of uh getting lazy latest versions uh from jenkins which uh i guess tails the last five um releases um that seems a little odd to me um and i don't know if you guys are actively trying to make changes i'd imagine you guys probably want to move to like more of like a push model where i guess you see a release on jenkins github or uh, up on the website and then something triggers a build um so that way you're not just building five at a time you're really just building whatever just got pushed is that something you guys would be kind of working towards or want to support i'm not familiar with with this particular segment of code and i don't know if alex is either it may okay. it, it def it predates my involvement with looking at these scripts so my apologies i don't have an answer for you okay that's fine I think the reason that this was done, uh, actually, I don't know why this was done. <laughs> I was thinking of a different part of the code. I'm, yeah. I'm not really sure. I think the, well, I think this was done because if the Docker image changed and there was an error in the actual Docker image rather than the Jenkins itself, um, they wanted to update the most recent versions that people would be using. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because I, I saw a couple, like, in, I guess in the published one, right, you're not tailing just five. I think you tail the last, like, 20 or something like that. Um, 
And then you guys have checks in, in – I'm trying to find it somewhere. I'll last 30. Uh, you guys have checks in there to basically say, hey, does this um, version already – you know, is it published already? So it would skip that. It just seemed like a lot of redundancy of like, okay, hey, we pulled the last 30 versions. Let's just loop through maybe, let's say, 25, and they're all already published, and the last five aren't. So let me just go ahead and build the last five. It would be nice to have more of like a push model where um because like, what what's you guys is like lag time where like say jenkins drops something are you guys immediately building uh that newest version or lts that jenkins just dropped or is that even a goal for you guys to kind of stay relatively in sync of like hey new jenkins just dropped let me just kick off a build uh to kind of build the docker image for that so for the official repository um it is built on a time basis. And so that's oh. another reason this check is in um, because okay. we, um, the way that the current release setup is done, it's, it's not um, fully automated. We have mm. a project that is fully automating that release and we would be able to kick off um, Docker builds and stuff like that. But currently it's, it's, it's not that way. So that's another reason it's a time based thing and that it has to go pull the, the most recent versions. Okay. All right, it's sweet. Th thank you. Uh, that was like one of a little good fusion. Um, I guess you probably do want to wait a little bit, anyways, to make sure everything's stable and all that, right? Uh, no, any major bugs or? Actually, that that is not typically an issue in terms of concern. The typical is we want we want the Docker images very very soon after an LTS or a weekly is available. But okay. Alex is right that the initial release of a Jenkins version, so 2.221, as an example, is generated at an unpredictable time and done right now by a human being, Kosuke, because of the code signing. Okay. All right. Sweet. Sweet. I, I just, those were like the little, uh, you know, kind of areas I was a little confused about going in. And I didn't know if it was something you guys were working towards or there's other little gotchas like you guys kind of mentioned um so anyways uh that's that's kind of it for my the new code and i i like after talking with you guys i don't know how useful it would be um since you, you still have the whole problem of not getting not having all the architectures i guess i could add back all the pmu stuff uh but i think i think moving to building on all architectures would be a good idea but um Maybe that isn't practical right now, at least. Well, I, I think it's an excellent question. It's one we need to hoist into the infrastructure team to see, all right, are we at a point where we could, uh, where we could turn on other agents in the, in the ci.jenkins.io infrastructure? And you noted that there are several different, pro several providers that might be willing to provide access to S390 and PowerPC64. Mm -hmm. It, it looks like on Azure, they do have um, ARM32, E7, and ARM64, but no S390 or PowerPC. Oh, cool. Okay, so the ARM, so Azure, Azure, very good. All right, so that's really encouraging. I, I don't know what their full support is, but it looks like you can create VMs and stuff on those architectures I mentioned, so. Oh, was it ARM32 and, and 64 or just 64? Uh, both 32 and 64. Oh, awesome. So that, that, that could at least do part of um, what we're looking for. And then we could um, maybe do Travis for the S390 and PowerPC. I mean, we, like we, we, we have resources uh, to like give you guys uh, access to uh, a beefy VM. And then you guys can make that into an agent if you guys want. Um, so, I mean, it, it, sound, it sounds like, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it sounds like we almost kind of got, all the platforms right there. Uh, if you guys are able to at least utilize the whole Azure setup for ARM. Yeah, I'll look, I'll look into it further and, and do a few tests and stuff like that. Uh, so those are publicly facing servers? Yeah, they, they could be set up to be publicly okay. facing. They're, they're hosted okay. uh, at Marist College. Uh, it's part of the Linux One uh, community cloud. Um, oh. And for vendors we work with or open source projects, uh, we can basically uh, give a long-term 
uh, box to you guys. Cause, um, right now how the community cloud is set up is I think you have a 90 day trial or 180 day trial. i uh, not trial. I don't think you can buy anything there, but, uh, 180 day, like limit. Um, but, uh, for, I guess, you know, like I said, vendors or open source, uh, communities, uh, we can give access for long term. AC, AKA indefinitely. So. Great. Excellent. That's really encouraging. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. So in terms of action items, it looks like you're going to continue your evolution of the, uh, Jim, continue evolving the published scripts. Yeah. Um, I need to refine it a little bit and then, um, finish the manifest steps. Um, and then, um, I mean, I'll keep making it, uh, you know, flexible where we, we can use Jenkins agents, you know what I mean? Uh, where you're basically just, you know, pushing a workload to another machine. Um, I won't totally couple it with, uh, Travis. So I'll give you guys that flexibility. Um, so, um, I just don't, I'm not going to continue testing on Travis cause obviously I don't have access to you guys, uh, build pipeline. Um, right. so. Alex, is that reasonable to you? Are you okay with that? Yeah, sounds any improvement is is a positive, I think. Yeah, thanks very much, Jim. That's great. We have we have actually hit our time. I was I'm I had one item remaining that I'm gonna skip. We will defer to another time unless there's some urgent thing that we've got beyond that. I'd like to call for a, an end for today's session. Any other topics we need to be sure we, we cover today? All right, thanks everybody. Alex, thank you very much. Jim, thank you, thank you. What great, great results. It's, it's so cool to see S390 and, and PowerPC. That's, that's really wonderful. Thanks very, very much. And we'll meet again in two weeks. All right, thank you for letting me share. Thanks. thanks.